John of the Eye Patch, Chapter 6, Spanish Gold. John ran from the bathroom yelling, Dad! Dad! I just saw! Only to come to a skidding halt when he saw his dad sitting at the dining room table, a plate of half-eaten pasta and salad in front of him. Another plate across the table was untouched. Whose plate was that? Where have you been? His dad asked. Um... John wasn't sure how to explain time travel to a pirate island. John! His dad removed his glasses, folding them and sitting them on the plate. I've been calling for you for half an hour. I saw, I saw mom! John blurted. His dad sat straighter and set his jaw in the way that John knew a stern lecture was on the way. Surprisingly, his dad's face softened into a faltering smile. I miss your mom, too. Yes, I miss her, John said, but I saw her. Where? What? Where, where? His dad leaned forward, his eyebrows pushing together as he thought. She's marooned on a pirate island. John held up a pirate eye patch. This, this lets me visit her. John... His dad sighed. This is my fault. I haven't been spending enough time with you. Now you're inventing outrageous stories. He shook his head. Your mom is gone. I don't know what happened to her. I do! John ran to his dad's side. He held the eye patch out. I put this on. I go back in time. I see mom. An eye patch. His dad took it from John and looked it over. It was worn by a real pirate, John added, shifting anxiously from foot to foot. And you, you just put it on like this? His dad slipped the eye patch on. He smiled at John with one eye covered, the other comforting. John waited, but his dad didn't go thin. His dad didn't vanish like the storyteller or his mom had said he did. Instead, his dad merely pulled the eye patch back off. It's a fantasy, John. I don't ever want you to stop loving your mom, but you have to let her go. I have to let her go as well. I can see that my inability to move on has been affecting you. For that, I'm sorry. We've pined for Mary for far too long. She's not coming back. But she wants to, John protested. I'm sure whatever she is, wherever she is, if she wanted to, she'd have come home already, his dad said. I told you, she's stuck in the past. She climbed into a treasure chest and it took her back in time. John, please. I think you've read too many pirate comic books. His dad placed the eye patch next to his glasses. Let me show you. John reached for the eye patch. Just had to slip it on, he thought, and he'd disappear for his dad. His dad would see that it was not a made-up story, but his dad moved the eye patch away from him. John, what I'm trying to say, your mom, he pinched his fingers at the corner's eyes to clear away a tear. She meant everything to me, but I can't live my life stuck in the past, and neither can you. I have to go to work. Dangu's fever is becoming a real threat in the Caribbean. I, I can get back to doing some good in the world. I can stop this outbreak from becoming a pandemic. We're going to the Caribbean? John felt a surge of hope. If he was there in the present and he used the eye patch to go back in time, he could be even better at helping his mom try to get back home. No, John, I'm going, not you, his dad said. Why not? What will I do when you're away, Dad? Dengu is not an, is a nasty virus. I don't want you exposed to it, his dad said. I'll be careful, John promised. It's a no. His dad's steady, unblinking gaze was resolute. What am I supposed to do when you're gone? Stay with Aunt Joe and Uncle Luke? It wasn't the worst fate John could imagine. His aunt and uncle were artists who lived in a house 
that seemed to be out of a fairy tale. There were at least a dozen cats included in the house. His dad shook his head. No, not Joe and Luke. I'm enrolling you in boarding school. You can't be serious, John screamed. I went to boarding school when I was your age. It gave me character. It made me into the man I am today. At least the man I was before your mom left. The man I'll be again starting tomorrow. I don't want to go to boarding school, John protested. It's not what you want, John. It's about what's good for you, his dad said. What's good for me is getting our family back together, John stomped his foot. His dad stood and embraced John in a long, strained hug. John wasn't sure what to do. His dad wasn't normally a hugger, and John didn't want to ruin the moment, but John was angry. Why can't he believe me? Just let me use the eye patch, he thought. John reached for it, but the gray and black sharkskin eye patch was halfway across the table. We need to stop pretending that your mom is coming home, his dad said, breaking the awkward hug. She's gone, and we have to get back to our lives. We have to get back to work. She's not gone. Enough of this. Dad picked up the eye patch and held it in front of John. An eye patch that lets you travel in time, John. He shook the eye patch. No more fantasies. You need structure. You need order. You need something I'm obviously failing at. You have to go to boarding school. They will provide the tools that I'm failing to give you. Dad, I just want to be with you. John heard his voice break. He felt the tears on his cheeks. He forgot about the eye patch. He had already lost his mom. And now he was going to lose his dad as well. John, I need to be the doctor I am. These people need me to be the doctor I am. I need you, Dad! John cried. It's difficult, but you'll thrive at boarding school. You're quick to make friends. You're smart. You're resourceful. You're just like me. You're not the only doctor in this world, Dad. John could see his dad through the tears flooding his eyes. Have someone else go. John, you know I love you and I want the best for you. Right now, I'm not able to give it to you. Maybe in a year when I get some fresh air, when I get away from the memory of your mom once and for all, and then, then I can be your dad, the dad you deserve. But for now, I need this so, so I can move forward. It's not an easy decision, but it's the best decision for the both of us. Dad picked up his glasses. Give me the eye patch, Dad. I'll show you, John begged. This isn't healthy, his dad pointed at the eye patch. You're becoming too obsessed with this fantasy. It's not a fantasy, it's real, John yelled. All right, go to your room. We're gonna talk about this in the morning, his dad said. Why can't you believe me? Mom said she loved you. It was her. It was mom. Give me the eye patch, Dad, and I'll prove it right now. John, go to your room right now. His dad's stare was unwavering and his voice serious. John's pillow gave little solace as he cried in his room. Mom's trapped in the past. Dad, why can't you believe me? John wondered, but his dad had tried on the eye patch and nothing had happened. The entire story seemed like a made-up fantasy. John sat and he wiped his eyes. His dad was a man of science. John would have to prove to him the eye patch was real. Just put it on so dad could see me teleport. He kept saying over and over again in his head. All he had to do was get it back. Where could it be? His dad had the eye patch in his hand with his glasses. He always took his glasses to bed with him in case he needed to check his messages. Did he take the eye patch too? Maybe he left it in the office. Probably wishful thinking. There wasn't much John could do until morning. Besides, his mom had asked him to track down the treasure chest. And that was something he could do on his own. He started with his pirate encyclopedia. The entry on the treasure chest wasn't as encompassing as he had hoped it would be. One page, three chests, that's it. The, uh, the English treasure chest had a dome top and a narrow base, like the kind they used in movies about pirates. The Dutch chest was wider and shorter, and the Spanish chest was the only one that looked like anything from John's memory of the chest from the storyteller. He opened his titanium 
notebook, laptop, and he started searching the internet for Spanish treasure chests. He found one. One that combined wrought iron and weathered wood. That's it, he thought. He printed the picture. John slipped open his door, and he peeked into the hall. The light was on in his dad's room. John decided to sneak downstairs in case his dad was angry. He moved on a tiptoed pace, careful to avoid the creaky seventh and fourth step. A glance to the now clear dinner table reminded John that he hadn't eaten dinner. A pig of hunger, pang of hunger, twisted his stomach. Look for the eye patch. Just look for the eye patch, he thought. John looked through his dad's office, hoping to find the eye patch on the desk or in one of the drawers. Nothing! He took the color image of the treasure chest from the printer on his way out of the office. Before returning upstairs, he raided the refrigerator for something to eat. His now cold plate of dinner was covered in plastic wrap. He used the microwave to warm it. He wasn't supposed to eat in his room, but he also had been sent to his room without dinner and forgotten. So he decided that this time it was okay. He ate quickly while looking at the Spanish treasure chest. Something was missing, a detail that went on the front. John grabbed a set of markers and a clean sheet of paper, and he started doodling shapes. The first one was too round, the second doodle too wavy, the third looked too much like a palm tree, the fourth like an overcrowded traffic exchange. Frustrated, John fell into his bed and he tried to sleep. He had to find something for his mom. He went back to visit her. Sorry, if he went back to visit her, and only told her the chest was Spanish, there wouldn't be much help. His room darkened to night, and the stars across the ceiling glowed a ghostly green. He stared at them, remembering the constellations, the Big Dipper, Orion in the Belt, the Southern Cross. It clicked. Something clicked. The stars. The chest. The front of the chest had a sunburst on it. John scrambled from his bed to his desk and he started to draw. He drew directly on the picture of the treasure chest. Not a perfect rendition of the sunburst, but it was something to go on. He could take this picture into the past and ask people if they had seen the treasure chest. Now all he needed was his eye patch. Mom, I'm going to get you and I'm going to bring you home, John said. <laughs>